Hello, my name is Paula. I'm a PhD student at PUC Rio and I present my work on a composition of four network model for gas condensate flow, which was developed with Professor Marcio Carvalho. So our work focuses on gas condensate reservoirs and more specifically on their flow performance issues, which I'll explain using this phase diagram and this reservoir wall bore scheme. So if the spring arrow represents a reservoir as a thermal depletion, when we have high pressures, we are in the single phase region where there's only gas flowing from the reservoir to the well bore. However, at lower pressures, we enter the two-phase region where condensate dropout takes place, and what happens in the reservoir is that far from the well, we still may have that single-phase gas flow. However, close to the well bore, we shift to a two-phase gas condensate flow. And this is a problem because the condensate blocks many of the gas flowing paths and reduces a lot the well productivity in a phenomenon known as condensate blockage. So when you have this kind of reservoir, it is crucial to estimate this reduction in productivity so that we can assess the field economic viability and also define production strategies. And those things are normally done with reservoir scale simulations to which IK input is the relative permeability curves. And the thing is that for gas condensate systems, um, those curves not only depend on the saturations as usual, but they also depend on the phases, interfacial tension, and the flowing velocity, which makes them particularly difficult to model. So in this context, our goal is to develop a four network model to simulate gas condensate flow and generate this kind of data for production estimation. So now we move to the description of the model. Starting with the model assumptions, the model is isothermal. There are only two phases flowing, the liquid and gaseous hydrocarbon phases. The fluids are considered to be Newtonian. We enforce a local thermodynamic equilibrium within each simulation time step. The porous medium is slightly compressible. There are no chemical reactions, no flow of the borders, and no gravitational effects. Moving to geometry, a poor network is basically a network of nodes and edges that represent poor bodies connected by poor throats. In our model, we can use either uh, irregular networks, which are based on poor scale imaging, or regular networks when this kind of imaging is unavailable. Also in the model, the throats are represented by converging diverging circular capillaries. The radius of the capillaries follow this equation here, which describes a hyperbolic profile. So if we zoom in a small part of the network here, this is what the structure would look like. So this is what we define as a node. And in the control volume of each node, the model variables are calculated in each simulation time step. And this is what we define as an edge. And the edges are important because they control the transport between the nodes. And to quantify this transport, we have to, given the capillary geometry and the flow pattern in this capillary, calculate the conductances for both phases, for gas and the liquid. And the conductances are the um, ratio between the volumetric flow rate and the pressure drop in a capillary. So now we can move to the, fl the flow patterns I mentioned. So our flow patterns in a capillary vary according to the thermodynamic conditions. So if the pressure is above the dew point pressure, we have a single phase gas flow. At pressures below the dew point pressures, we start having an annular two phase flow with gas flowing in the center of the capillary and condensate flowing adjacent to the capillary walls. And if this condensate saturation increases too much, we may reach a critical condition above which this configuration is no longer stable. And we tend to form those bridges of liquid in the capillaries. And when a capillary accommodates one of those bridges, the flows of both gas and liquid are interrupted. However, once formed, this bridge of condensate may be moved, which would allow again the flow of both phases if the pressure drop across this capillary exceeds a critical value. And this critical value is given by this equation here. It is a function of the saturation in the capillary, the capillary geometry, and the interfacial tension between the phases. So to calculate this, we've implemented the Weinog and Kass correlation for interfacial tension, which is a function of some parameters that we determined in our flash calculations and also the partial values of all the components of the mixtures. And here we can see the snapshots of gas and condensate flow in glass micromodules. Those experiments were conducted by a different group. I didn't conduct any experiments. 
And if we focus on points A, B and C, we can see those flow patterns I just mentioned. Uh, here in those images, the grains are represented in white, the gas in light gray and they condensate in this medium gray. And we can see in A, a condensate bridge closing and B, one opening and C, one that is about to be formed. So now we move to the system of equations. Those are equations are solved for each node and the uh, networks in each simulation time step. And first is the molar balance equation, then the volume consistency equation, which basically matches the volume of the pore, the node, with the volume of the phases inside the pore. And finally, some boundary condition equations that we use to impose either molar flow rate or pressure in the network boundaries. So those equations form a very big system of nonlinear equations, which is solved with the newton roxton method, while the phase equilibrium calculations use the penguin roxton equation of state. So now, just before going to the results, I would like to give an overview of a simulation procedure. So when we, on a, we want to simulate a case, first we define the geometry of the network, then the initial conditions, which are the temperature, the pressure, and number of moles of each component contained in each node. Then we define the composition that we will inject in the network and the boundary conditions, which can be either pressure in both inlet and outlet of the network or pressure in one end and molar flow rate in the other. So with this data, we can form that system of nonlinear equations and solve it, getting for uh, each simulation time step, the outputs that are pressure and number of moles of each component for each node and molar flow rate in and out the network. So now we move to the results section. The results are presented today from a validation against experimental data. In those experiments, a binary mixture of methane and butane was injected in a brace and stone core, and relative friendability curves were obtained. To reproduce those experiments, a network of 20 by 25 by 25 nodes were, was used, and the actual size of the network was 1.5 cubic millimeters. This network was a regular 3D grid with coordination number of three, and the coordination number is the number of edges connected to each node. So to create this network, first I started with a cubic lattice of nodes and edges, and then I randomly removed some of those edges until I got the coordination number of three. Also for this network, I had the Porous road size distribution of this exact core, and I assign this distribution to the constriction radius of the capillaries. To define the maximum radius of the capillaries, I didn't have any specific data from this core, so I used the aspect ratio of a different barrier sample, and the aspect ratio is the ratio between pore body and porous road radii. Finally, the flowing conditions that are reproduced were obtained with three different gas flowing velocities of 9, 18, and 36 meters per day, and two different values of interfacial tension, uh, 15 and 37 micronewton per meter. So now I present the first set of results obtained with the lowest uh, interfacial tension. Um, here are the curves for the gas flowing velocity of 9 meters per day, here 18, and here 36. In those curves, uh, the results obtained with our model are in red, the experimental results in black, and the results from a different poor network model that I found in the literature are in blue. So the first thing we can see by comparing those images is that the positive effect of velocity was well represented. If we compare this case here with the lowest flowing velocity with this one with the highest flowing velocity, we can see that the curves shift upwards and the model curves have shifted by the same amount as the experimental curves. Also, we can see that the overall values match, uh, both for our model and for the other model in the literature. But one big difference is that we didn't use any fitting parameters to match the experiments, and this other model has used some parameters to fit this, this case here with the lowest flowing velocity. And finally, we can see that we have overestimated a bit the gas relative permeability at low condensate saturations, more specifically those two first points here in each curve. And I believe that this happened because of the aspect ratio that we used. I just mentioned that we didn't have the aspect ratio of the exact core of the experiments, and probably the distribution that we use has uh, relatively low values of uh, around 1.5. Uh, for instance, the, for this other poor network model, this average was above 3, 
And what happens when you have low aspect ratios is that you snap off at higher liquid saturations. So at low liquid saturations, we don't tend to have those condensate bridges blocking the flow, which leads to higher uh, relative permeability values. So now we move to the other set of results obtained with the highest interfacial tension. Those are the same curves, uh, the curves obtained with the same velocities. And now we compare uh, our model curves with experiments in black, the, this other poor network in blue, and for this case specifically, we found another poor network model in the literature. So uh, now if we compare this set of results with the other one, we can see that the effect of interfacial tension was also uh, well represented for the same condensate saturations, those values here are lower than the other values, and this was expected because we have higher interfacial tensions. Again, we can see that the positive effect of rate was well represented, and finally that the overall value is much. And for this set of results specifically, I believe that uh, our model has outperformed the other models. We can see that this model in blue doesn't represent very well the experiments at high condensate saturations. And this model in green, even though it represents very well this case here, they didn't try to reproduce the other cases, so we don't know if those effects are well represented. And finally, uh, we can see both in this set of results and the other one that we have overestimated a bit the condensate relative permeabilities, and I believe that this happened because we modeled condensate flow as a liquid film flow on smooth capillaries, and this is not very realistic. So probably by uh, including in the model the, an effect of wall roughness uh, could uh, potentially improve those results. And uh, finally, in the results section, I would just, pre would just like to present some results that um, analysis that we ran for all the cases we simulated. I would just present uh, one example here with this case. And the first thing we analyzed was the number of capillaries blocked by condensate bridges, because this is the main mechanism of condensate blockage. So if we analyze point by point on those curves, starting with this one, and this one, we can see that indeed, for those two first points, we have a very low percentage of blocked capillaries, which may explain this overestimation. And then when we move in the higher condensate saturation direction, we can see that this percentage increases continuously. And the other thing that we evaluated was the composition variation in the networks. Um, because as the condensate saturation increases, we have a buildup of the heavier components of the mixture, which in this case is just butane. So again, if we analyze the same points, starting with this one, we can see that we have 22% of butane, uh, which leads to this phase envelope, This the critical point is here, and this, is, this line represents the simulation temperatures. So if we move in this direction again, here we already have 23.5% of butane, here 25, and with this accumulation, the phase envelopes shift to the right. And for those two last points here, this uh, shift was so big that we can see that now the critical point is to the right of the simulation temperatures, which marks the transition from gas condensate to volatile oil uh, in the behavior of the phases. So now we can move to the concluding remarks and a compositional uh, dynamic full network model for gas condensate flow was presented. The results showed um, good quantitative agreement with experiments. We could both uh, reproduce well the effects of interfacial tension and flow velocity in the curves. Um, a relationship between this bridge formation and condensate blockage was identified. Uh, the accumulation of heavier components was quantified and the transition from gas condensate to volatile oil was observed at high uh, condensate saturations. And for future work, I would uh, recommend conducting uh, flow analysis with networks and gas condensate mixtures that more realistically represent reservoir rocks and fluids, um, including the effect of flow roughness on liquid film flow and maybe expanding the model for polyhedral capillary cross sections. And finally, I would like to thank all the organizations that made this work possible and thank you for watching.